uh, in 2005, Belgium has abolished any registration tax on capital. So there is no registration tax on capital. There are no stamp duties on capital. When you invest in Belgium, everything you invest goes into your activity. Our tax administration does not levy any taxes. So you have a tax exemption on capital gains on shares. If a company sells shares it owns, it owns in another company, it is not taxed on the capital gains, which for a holding company obviously is paramount because you hold the shares of other companies if you wish to sell them. Um, you, if everything went well, will do a capital gain. Well, this capital gain is a netto profit for the Belgian company. One weak point, or something that is considered as a weak point in Belgium, is the taxation of persons and on the income of work for persons. So if you establish a company somewhere, well, you will need to pay people and you will need to send some of your people out of China to be sure that it is managed well. So um, what, is, what is important is the cost that this person that you will send from China to Belgium um, in order to uh, monitor the activity will cost you because he needs a letter that not only should be the same as the one he got in China, but should be in accordance to the standard of living and the cost of living in the country he is. And the money you should give him should reward him the fact that he's thousands and thousands of kilometers away of his loved ones and his dear, and his dear ones. So normally when a Chinese company sends somebody out from China to Belgium, it should require an important um, salary package, let's put it that way. And the salary package was very much burdened by Belgian taxation. On high salaries, one should know that in Belgium, for a cost of three for the employer, the employee gets only one. But in order to give the opportunity to foreign companies to invest in Belgium, a special tax regime for foreign directors, for expatriates, was established. And basically, this special tax regime allows the company to give an allowance, a yearly allowance of approximately 35,000 euro tax-free to any director. Explaining the specifics of this tax regime would take once again 45 minutes. I have only 30 minutes to do my whole speech. So um, I'd be glad to answer questions if somebody uh, wishes to ask them. No withholding tax on dividends was something I already uh, mentioned when I talked about the limitation of the agreement to a maximum 10% in the agreement between China and Belgium. Well, Belgium does not use this possibility of withholding 10%. It does not withhold anything. So, based on the internal tax regime and the fact that Belgium has a treaty with China on the one hand, with Hong Kong on the other hand, I allow myself to say that Belgium is an ideal gateway for Chinese companies who wish to establish themselves in Europe and for European companies who wish to establish themselves in China. You need to add to the purely tax considerations, which I will uh, in a minute explain or, or, uh, a bit further, that Belgium has the advantage to be ideally located in Europe, of course. As you all know, Brussels is the capital of Europe. And um, moreover, it is not only centrally location, but located, but being the capital of Europe, one should know that Brussels has huge experience in um, dealing with other cultures. We deal with, uh, with other cultures all the time. In the beginning, actually, choosing Brussels as the capital of Europe was not mainly motivated, but also motivated by the fact that the population of Brussels itself is composed by different cultures, different communities. So um, we are, or we like to think of us as such, a population in Brussels that is very open and that has uh, much experience in, um, let's say, 
understanding the fact that other people might have other cultures, that everybody at home has its own culture, and the community between all these cultures, well, as uh, experience taught us, is based mainly on respect. That's why um, most of us tend to think that although in Belgium we have some problems between communities on the political level, in Brussels where these communities meet, um, one um, can only establish the, on a daily basis that with respect for each other, um, people tend to um, live together quite well and to understand each other perfectly. Moreover, Belgium has this great advantage of having a very good infrastructure. One should know that although Hong Kong is, um, as I understood, the biggest port of the world uh, by the time being, for the time being, um, Antwerp is an historical, very important port and still today in the top five of the biggest ports in the world. And a bit further you have Rotterdam, which is the second largest port in the world. Um, these two ports might merge at, this, at one stage. But so, so bringing over goods from China to Europe would be ideal through Belgium. This is uh, one aspect. And on the other aspects, uh, communication, um, infrastructure, um, networks, and so on. Since we are the capital of Europe, one might consider that establishing a European network would be not only for tax purposes but also for general purposes be ideally done through Belgium. So um, I will focus mainly because our audience is mainly for mainland China on uh, the investment from Chinese companies uh, into European countries how it should be dealt with. So. Um, this scheme gives us China, Hong Kong, Belgium, European countries. Um, Hong Kong is actually the most debatable aspect since um, its biggest interest is based on transfer pricing for the time being because the know-how language-wise and so on um, is now very, very much present uh, in China itself so Hong Kong is not required. Once uh, the Chinese authorities will have understood how to uh, control uh, transfer pricing, I'm not sure that Hong Kong would be very much uh, would be interesting for Chinese companies, but this is already details that uh, should not be included in my speech because I don't know how, how long I still have left. But why Belgium? Because Belgium being in Europe warrants you that once you, your Chinese subsidiary, so the company that is established, let's say in Italy, has a bet, made some profit. This profit will always be taxed in Italy, will be submitted to corporate tax in Italy. Once it has been submitted of, of corporate tax in Italy, the amount that remains, let's say that Italy um, would submit it to a 30% corporate tax, the 70 will be transferred as such to the Belgium holding company, which will have 70, which will transfer the whole 70 without a dime that would be levied in Belgium to Hong Kong. And then actually Hong Kong will not levy a dime as well. So from the corporate tax in the country in which the profit is realized, which cannot be, uh, which is Everybody, you, you need to pay it. If you do profit somewhere, you need to pay this corporate tax. It is unavoidable. But once you pay this tax, by doing it such, you have the complete amount that will come back to China without any government being a partner on your activity, um, although it is, would not be required. If, for instance, the same company would not pass through Belgium and go directly to Italy, the Italian government would be allowed to withhold up to 25% of the 70 on the dividends, which actually means that by passing through Belgium, although no activity was done in Belgium except the fact of having a, company, a Belgian company uh, that is between Hong Kong, China and the Italian company, allows you to have uh, 70 instead of uh, 50. 
instead of 52 and a half, which would then be the case if uh, Italy um, takes a 30% corporate tax and a 20% withholding tax on the dividends. Um, it has been quick. Um, I'm sorry, uh, this was the time frame that was given to me. I hope it uh, entertained you. Um, and thank you for staying so late. <laughs>